In this video, we're going to continue using our graphing calculator to assist us with graphing polynomial functions and identifying all the parts, the real zeros, the relative minimum and relative maximum values. So let's take a look at our function, f of x equals x cubed plus 3x squared. Let's get our calculator out. We're going to go to y equals, and we're going to type in x cubed plus 3x squared. And then we're going to hit graph. And we'll see when we hit our graph that we have our function graphed for us. And I'm going to take it, the image, and put it here so we can look at how are we going to sketch it later on. Now, we're going to find a table of values. So go to your table, go to second graph and pull your table. Now I'm going to use these values specifically from negative 4 to positive 2 because your y's are still close to your graph visually. So we have our table and what we're going to do is we are just going to copy those from our calculator. We're going to start our table x column, y column. We're at negative 4, negative 16. We're at negative 3, 0, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 2, we got 0, 0, 1, 4, and 2, 20. And then we're going to plot those points. You know, we can't do negative 4, negative 16. That's way, way down here, but it's important to keep that in mind when sketching that it's way down below here. Um, we're at negative 3, 0. We're at negative 2, positive 4. We're at negative 1, positive 2. We're at 0, 0. We're at 1, 4. 2, way up here to 20. Again, it's way off the grid. You're going to have to keep that in mind when sketching. Now, we don't sketch yet because though we have these points graphed, if we look at our graph, we still have zeros to mark, x-intercepts, and we have a relative maximum and a relative minimum value on our graph that we need to find. So that's what we're going to do next. Before we sketch this curve, we need to find those values. So let's do our zeros first. So remember, we use the zero feature in our calculator to find our zeros. If I were to take a look, I see I have one x-intercept here, and it looks like one here. So I'm going to go to second calc, option two, zero. I always go left to right for my zeros, so I'm going to mark to the left, left bound of this zero, and hit enter. Right bound, I'm going to mark to the right of that zero, hit enter, and guess, hit enter again. So my first zero is negative three. I'm gonna repeat the process to find this zero over here. So second calc again, option two, zero. This time I wanna mark left and right of this zero here. So left bound, I'm to the left of it, so I'm gonna hit enter. And then right bound, you're gonna hit enter again. Guess, just hit enter. We have the calculator thinking to see what the zero is going to be. And so now I'm going to find the other zero. Now, the other zero is tricky with the calculator, and we're going to see why. If you go through second calc, option two, zero, you want to mark left bound, right bound. I'm to the left of my zero. I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to go to the right of my zero. Hit enter. Guess. You can hit enter, or I'm going to move it close and I get a zero of zero, zero. Now what happens is if I don't move it close, I'm gonna repeat this process again. 
if I don't move it close, I'm to the left of it, I hit enter, go to the right of it, hit enter, and guess, if I hit enter again, notice the calculator is taking a while to think, and the calculator is going to say, error, no sign change. That is why, and we haven't done it yet, but when we first did in chapter 5, I always said, on the guess part, you should move the cursor close to it, as there's certain times your calculator is going to mess up. Now, if you ever get error, no sign change, the reason why it occurred here is because we didn't move the cursor close. And also, take a look. We know zeros occur at x-intercepts, which occur when y equals 0. I mean, take a look at this. In your table, you could see where y is 0 at x equals negative 3 and at x equals 0. So my zeros are x equals negative 3 and 0. So I could have even used, for this one, not all of them, because the decimal ones you won't be able to see, but here I can see here's my 0, my x-intercept, and here's my 0. And so now I want to do the relative minimum and relative maximum values. So that's the next part. So let me grab this and shrink it down. And we'll do the relative minimum first. And so let's find our relative minimum. To do that, what we're going to do is we are going to, again, use our graphing calculator. Hit enter to clear that out. Go back to our graph. Second calc. We want minimum. Hit enter. Left bound, right bound. So go to the left of the minimum. Right bound, go to the right of the minimum. Guess. You can move it closer. We see there's a reason why that is why you're given the option to guess. I can hit enter. And look at what your calculator is giving you. 1.15 times 10 to the negative 6 for your x and 3.99 6 times 10 to the negative 12, this is the coordinate 0, 0. And again, I've talked about before in previous videos, uh, scientific notation, 0.000001, it's 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, it's zero. Point zero, 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 for 3.996, I mean, that's 0. And so that's our relative minimum. We can repeat the process for our relative maximum except for this time for your relative maximum you go to second calc option four maximum left bound right bound so here's my maximum i'm going to go to the left of it enter go to the right of it enter guess and I get my relative maximum. My relative maximum being the coordinate negative 2, 4. And so when you find these, you know, make sure you mark them down, you write them down. And what we're going to do is we make sure these points are plotted on our graph before we sketch. And so I want to make sure the point zero zero is plotted because that is my relative minimum and it is already plotted and i also want to plot the point negative two four because that's my relative maximum and that is already plotted as well and so now we use the graph i grabbed in the beginning of our polynomial on the calculator to assist us with sketching the graph we're going to come up way from down here, because remember, that is negative 4, negative 16. We're going to come up, go through this x-intercept. We're going to hit this maximum point, relative maximum, and we're going to come down, go through the point negative 1, 2, hit our relative minimum of 0, 0, come up, hit this point of 1, 4, and at 2, we're all the way up at 20, so you're not even going to hit that point, you're just going to keep on going up. And so there's the sketch of our graph of f of x equals x cubed plus 3x squared. The process, type in your calculator. 
get the table of values, copy it down, and then use the calculator to find the zeros, the relative minimum, the relative maximum, plot them, and then connect them all with the curve by using the image in your calculator as a tool to assist us. So let's do it a little bit quicker in the next example. So we have here f of x equals negative x cubed plus 2x squared minus 4. So I'm going to go to y equals, clear out what I have, and type in negative x to the third plus 2x squared minus 4. I can hit graph. I can see what my calculator looks like, uh, what the graph looks like on it. Then I'll know, you know how to sketch it. And then I grab from my calculator the table of values. If I take a look at the table, let's see negative 492. It's really large. Ah, oh, this looks good. Let's go from negative 2 to positive 4. And so then I just copy those down in my table. I got my x column, got my y column. Just copy them down. Negative 2 to 12, negative 1 to negative 1, 0 to negative 4. 1 to negative 3, 2, negative 4, you know, 3, negative 13. I got even write down 4, negative 36 if I wanted. And so there's my table. Plot the points negative 2 all the way down to negative 12. Can't plot it, but I know it's way, way, way down here. I'm at negative 1, negative 1. I'm at 0, negative 4. I'm at 1 negative 3, I'm at 2, negative 4, 3, all the way down to negative 13. And so again, you know, keep in mind this image. We know it's going to be coming down. It's going to hit this point. It's going to probably come up again somewhere and come back down. So, you know, with negative 2, positive 12 being way up here, it's coming down. You know, we need to keep that in mind when sketching. We can see here we have one real zero. So let's do our zeros first in our calculator. So we have our zeros. Remember, those are your x intercepts. So I'm going to go to my calculator. I have my graph. I'm going to hit second calc, option two zeros. I only have one zero here, one real zero. And so mark to the left of it. Enter, right bound, mark to the right of it, enter, guess, I'm just going to enter again, and I get my real zero at x equals negative 1.13. Go to two decimal places when writing down your real zeros, x equals negative 1.13. And now we're going to find our relative minimum value. So I can take a look. If I look at the graph, it looks like there's a turning point right there on the graph, right here. So second calc, minimum, option three. It's right here that I want. So I'm going to get a little bit closer. I'm to the left of it. Hit enter. I'm going to go to the right of it. I'm to the right of it. So I'm going to hit enter. Guess hit enter again. And I see my relative minimum. Again, hopefully you're starting to notice this number here is the number zero. So my relative minimum is the coordinate zero, negative four. And I'm going to repeat the process again to find my relative maximum value. Relative maximum could probably be this little turning point right there at the top. So second calc, option four. Mark to the left of it, so I'm going to get a little bit closer. Enter. Right bound. Go to the right of it. Hit enter. Guess, hit enter again. And so I have a relative maximum turning point at the coordinate 1.33. negative 2.81. And now 
I'm going to graph and I'm going to keep these points and plot them on my graph. So my zero is at negative x equals negative 1.13. So negative 1.13, we approximate it. I'm going to plot the point in blue so we can see our zero. Our relative minimum is the coordinate 0, negative 4. Our relative maximum is the coordinate 1.33, negative 2.81. So about right here is our relative maximum. And so now you have those plotted, and so you're going to connect with a curved graph. Remember, at negative 2, you're all the way up at positive 12, so you don't have a point up there. You come down, come down, come down, and again, you can keep the graph on your calculator to look at the sketching. You're going to go through your 0. You're going to go through the point, negative 1, negative 1, and then, remember, 0, negative 4 is your relative minimum, so it's going to hit that point, turn around, and come up, go through 1, negative 3, and then you're going to hit the relative maximum point, turn around, go down, at 3, you're all the way down to negative 13, so you're not going to hit any points in x equals 3 area. It's just going to come down, come down, come down. And so there is our graph of our polynomial function f of x equals negative x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5. Bottom line, put in your calculator. Get the table. Plot the points. Use the calculator. Find the zeros. Find the relative min. Find the relative max. Plot them connect with a curved line that follows the sketch that is on your graphing calculator.